G'day fellas and welcome to a casted game. Spawning in on the west side of the map, playing in the color blue as the Chinese. We've got Anatand. And on the on the east side of the map, playing as as the Mongols. I was gonna say as the Ottomans, as the Mongols, we've got Lucifron 7. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Golden League 2. It is time for us to begin the second game that we're gonna be casting here between these two players and in this second round. Now, for anybody who may have missed it, there is a few more villagers spawning in this game. We're 34 seconds through. Take a look at that. We've got seven vills on food already and five vills already over on wood. There is a lot of vills in this game. That is for sure. Now, the map, of course, is Kawasan. One of the things to note about Kawasan is there's lots of berries in the middle of the map. And there are also, there are also ponds. Uh, I, I think it's on, on this map you'll actually see in Age of Empires 2 because that's where the game comes from, or that's where the map comes from, rather. Uh, a lot of French players looking to come out into the middle of the map and take berries because the French get a bonus for berries, or, or Franks, rather. The Franks get a bonus for berries uh, quite early on uh, in uh, in Age of Empires 2. So you don't obviously see that here, berries being a slower, typically safer uh, resource to gather. But uh, interestingly, we don't see Abbasid or the Delhi coming out on this map despite the high amounts of berries i guess that's probably just because well it'd be pretty tough to secure these berries considering they're in the middle of the map now one thing to note is obviously with this map there are, there are ponds but the value of these ponds is significantly diminished this is one of the things I, I, i'd love to talk about more and explore more about what would need rebalancing if we went down this route because i'm genuinely thinking like it, it makes sense to try and get the game sped up a little bit, right? Like, don't get me wrong. I still think Age of Empires 4 is, is a very fast-paced game. Uh, and you, you can see, like, you, you take a look at my my videos. Oh, my lord, the Khan. Watch out, ladies and gentlemen. Khan coming out, almost going down right there. Um, uh, it's, it's actually a couple, been a couple of games we've seen the Khan come around the uh, the edge of the, the, the wood line and get almost taken out by the spears. But, um, yeah, one of the things to note is that typically when you're fishing... You, you start off with six vills and your first fishing boat comes out at maybe like your eighth vill, right? Maybe maybe like your ninth vill. Here, you've got 12 vills to start. So your fishing boats are coming out at like your 14th, 15th vill, which means that the effect of the, those fishing boats is lessened. The, the difference between fishing and not fishing is less significant than what it used to be, right? Because if, if you play a standard game and you've got six vills start and you're fishing... You've basically got a second town center from the beginning of the game. And while you've got a town center here from the beginning of the game as well, it's going to take you a little bit longer uh, to to pay off. Well, not necessarily to pay off, but it, I, I don't know exactly how to explain it. It's essentially, the difference between these two is not as great as it should or as it would be otherwise, right? Like imagine, let's say we're six vills less right here and you've got 15 vills against 20 vills. So it, it's, uh, it's, it's a much greater difference there, but... We got ourselves a little bit of early harassment coming in. I say early harassment. This is more of an early attack. And I like the way that Anatand is playing this, right? Like, it makes a lot of sense. He said, I can I can look to try and take advantage of the fact my enemy is going to play greedy here. He's going to be playing double dock, you know, thinking he can get away with it. But obviously, we're not going to let him get away with it. Deerstone's coming up for Lucifer, and he's trying his best to age up. Did not expect the amount of spears that were going to be coming out here would be high. We actually see a double Imperial official opening here from Anatan. Not something that we've seen in a long time, ever since the Imperial Academy change. And one of the things to notice, he, he just might look to follow this up with Barbican. If you're just going to follow it up with the Barbican, then it makes sense to do this. But we do see the first of the docks come down. Now, one of the things I would love to see from Anatan is just a couple of spears, whether holding position or patrolling along the edge here. Beautifully done. That's exactly what he needs to do. So make sure that no additional docks get thrown down. Because once a dock does get thrown down, it makes it very difficult. See, there, there we can see another dock coming in. But it makes it very difficult to actually get rid of that. Uh, if there's one change I'd like to see, it would be reducing the amount of health a dock has got, but make it have more armor against uh, against boats. So basically makes it more susceptible uh, to units on the land. Because as you can see right now, right, like there's a lot of spears here sieging down there. Uh, it, it is, uh, it's kind of crazy. I guess the alternative is like you give spears a bit more torch in, in, um, in Dark Age, but then that, that's got a whole bunch of balance implications. So we can see here, he's, he's going to look to try and dodge out all the attacks, but realizes that there's no real way for him to do that. The junk is going to be too strong. And so he's just able to hold onto that pond five minutes through this game. And we've already got the junk out. I tell you what, this is... So I'm enjoying this. I am liking this. I want to know what you guys are thinking, what you guys are feeling. Leave it down in the comments below. Let me know. 
you like these faster paced games <laughs> when we've got 12 spearmen, 14 spearmen, 17 spearmen on the field right now for Anatan five minutes through the game. I kind of like it, right? Like it, it's, it's very cool to see. Um, and, and look, don't get me wrong, in a six-ville game, you would have had the same thing, but it's likely Anatan uh, probably changes his whole strategy about this. And now that villager, we were talking about it, the prospect of that villager coming out. I think maybe one of the best ways to stop this is just to get out on the water yourself. So we'll look to see whether he does that. These spears are going to be looking to put on pressure. We'll take a look from the perspective of, of Lucifron and see if there's anything that he can really look to exploit. Main thing's going to be up towards the north. Take a look at that. We've got archers coming out. Only going with the single production archers at the moment. Doesn't have a lot of information about his enemy. And this is kind of a consequence of lack of scouting. I mean, he's been scouting. He's just had his scout in a different area. Uh, so had he scouted out his enemy and, and where that Uvu was, he could be putting on huge amounts of pressure right now. So essentially what you would do is you just make sure that your spears are camping every single side of the archery range so that if these archers come out, they, they would come towards the town center. So you'd want to have more anchored here. You're just going to be able to, to almost one-shot them as soon as they come out. But speaking of getting one-shot, all of these vills and archers just going to get eaten alive right there. Spearman doing a great job. Well, this one this one archer somehow managed to live to tell the tale, but unfortunately does get sent to his death. And now Anatan, I mean, this is one of the things, I, honestly, like I've talked about this before in this matchup, playing as the Chinese against the Mongols. One of my favorite things to do is to open with spears. Spears are just such a strong unit against the Mongols, right? Like when you think about the options that the, the Mongol player has got, they can go for early dock. They can go for early racks, early stable. Spears counter all of those things. And if they don't go for that, well, they've got an exposed Uvu or an exposed gold. If they get a really lucky spawn, they don't have an exposed gold or an exposed Uvu, but it's highly likely that one of them is exposed. And then you can look to put the pressure on. And these spears, I mean, these are going to get great value throughout the game. That's one of the things to know in the event that your enemy goes to Castle Age and gets knights out. Well, guess what? You've got 18 spearmen that are going to be useful like these guys never fall off and i think that's what makes it such a powerful opening here but we do see anatan now looking to add in a stable himself so going to be going into a spearman horseman composition and i do like this a lot this is the same composition we use typically against the french or against the rus uh, just because they're going to be looking to play archer knight and it's a very very strong counter composition uh, one of the key things that you need to do here is look to try and get a blacksmith early on just so that you can get your melee attack upgrade because you get great value from that melee attack upgrade going from 8 to 9, and then on the Horseman, going from 9 to 10. So you get really good value from that melee attack upgrade. But Lucifron thinking about aging up. We'll make sure we switch it over to the income per minute. Now, normally I do that around the 10 minute mark when I remember. But in this game mode, where you've got a few more vills, I reckon we could probably bring it forward to 8 minutes. It makes a little bit more sense. Eco upgrades coming through for Enetan, Wheelbarrow, Double Broadaxe. Over on the other side, Lucifron, he is just kind of focusing on getting up to Castle Age. And he doesn't really have a lot of info about what his enemy's up to. The Khan sneaking down here does see the horseman. How does he react? He immediately goes into training spears. Barracks is right next to the town center. So he's already up to four spears. But I think in this position, he's got to really try and look to play defensively, not engage against his enemy. The main issue that he's going to have is losing the production. But still, his enemy not really pushing out. Khan does go down and surely... I'm, sh I'm sure right now if this game were, were being casted live on a certain EGC TV, that good game would be typed in the Twitch chat. Everyone would just be saying, that's it, the game's over. The, the card has gone down. And I guarantee you, if Anatan wins this game, there is going to be people who say, I knew, I knew the moment the Khan was taken out that this game was over. And I got to tell you right now, I, I feel the same way. Anatan's stocks just went through the roof. The Khan is dead. Uh... But, I mean, it's kind of like, it's not necessarily foreshadowing, but it's like, whenever the Khan goes down, it's like an indication that maybe you've got a bit too much going on. Either that or your enemy did like a really nice sweep and took you out. I like the way that he's just camping here with the, with the explosive Dao. I think the, the only option you can really go for when you're doing this is to go for your own explosive ship and look to try and take out the, uh, the fishing boats. But even then, I don't think that does enough damage. Yeah, it doesn't do enough damage. You're not going to one-shot, so never mind then. So, a little attack on this south side, not really going to be able to achieve much. And now Enerten, going to be fighting Feudal up against Castle Age, of course, we do see. Uh, this is a very... This is dangerous, right? Like, uh, to me, this I, I see this as dangerous. Uh, norm normally, I, I'd like that that being built over here, but it doesn't look like Enerten going to be looking to challenge it. Doesn't really know about it, so, yeah, not, not a huge threat. And Barbican of the Sun going to be going down on the other side. Now, remember, the Barbican of the Sun is not your Castle Age landmark. This is your Song Dynasty landmark. So he's going to be changing from the Tang Dynasty with that line of sight scout bonus to the Song Dynasty, which is going to be giving that villager town center bonus. You can see the line of sight falling off right there. 
and the Castle Age comes through. So expect to see Lancers in queue immediately. Expect to see your Veterancy coming through for the Archers, and that's exactly what we see. Archers coming through. Do we have a Stable drop down? There's the Stable right now coming in. Uh, so he may look to move this Stable over towards the Uvu and then get double production going. He does have enough resources for that double production. So probably the right choice. Normally, you do want to keep your Lancers in pairs. That way, they can one-shot Villagers. But he's just going to be going off on the single Stable. No Uvu. And a new Khan has risen already. My lord, that Khan came back quickly. Excuse me, sir. What is your respawn time? Does it say? Damn, dude. That is so quick. That felt like 60 seconds. Maybe not 60. Maybe 90 seconds. But I tell you what, that was quick, wasn't it? I thought it was two minutes. I tell you what, that was a quick two minutes. That's what she said. Sorry. Sorry, I shouldn't have. Uh, Jukunu, mass starting to build here. And, uh, I mean, Jukunu going to be effective against men at arms once they reach a certain number. And if we take a look at the amount of uh, archery rangers we've got here, one of them is being supervised. So effectively, you've got about 5.5 archery rangers at the moment pumping out Shugunu. And the thing is, like, you, you ideally want to get to critical mass. Now, we've seen 3D, people from the 3D clan look to exploit the Shugunu before. We saw, uh, famously, Beastie taking on B and B going 100% Shugunu. Do we see that transition coming through from Anatand? Having to make Spearman because that was the only unit he could make in the Dark Age. Horseman looking to come around and he is transitioning almost 100% into an infantry composition. Got to be careful if a demo ship shows up on the shoreline. That is a surefire way to be taking out all of these units. Veterancy coming through on the Spearman as well. There's plenty of Spears that have come out and the Veterancy upgrade means that there's a lot of resources invested into Spearmen that are just going to be soaking up some arrows is probably the best way to say it. Chukunu getting that plus one ranged attack through now, but at the same time, we see ranged armor coming through on the blacksmith for Lucifron. And now Lucifron, he's looking like he might be in a bit of a tough spot. Hold on a minute, Lucifron, you are getting surrounded from all sides of the battle. Spearman coming in from the south, and the Chukunu just going to absolutely evaporate all of the archers on the backside here. Really nice hold here from Anatan, wonderfully surrounded. Now, where are those Lancers? There they are, the Lancers on the way through. Now, expect these guys not to get involved in the fight, but rather to be involved in more killing villagers, I would suspect, is what they're going to be doing here. Because as you can see, they do get quite well shredded uh, by these, by the Jukunu. I'd expect him to look to try and focus down these units on the backside as well. But the Jukunu number is really starting to rise up to 25, 29, 30 Jukunu. Are we seeing this again? Is there something secret in the meta that we don't know about where Jukunu are actually busted? I mean... We've talked about it for a long time, the, the, the prospect of Chukunu being busted. You guys will remember the, the build order that we did where we just made only Chukunu but put them on a stone wall so that they could be protected a little bit better. But now all of a sudden, he's looking to try and pick a fight here against the Chukunu, but there's not enough Lancers. One of the things to note is you want, ideally want to be up to about four or five Lancers because you can see it does take the Chukunu a while uh, to get through all of these, uh, to get through all the health of the Lancers. But when you've got, oh my lord, that Khan, that Khan, that Khan, watch out Khan. Uh, when you've got all of the Chukunu, uh, just focusing down a single Lancer, and there's only one or two Lancers. It's very easy to deal with. Demo ship going to be coming out for Lucifron. He's looking to try and cause havoc over on the edge here. Do dodging, dipping, diving, ducking, and eventually taking out the uh, the Hulk. The Hulk, the, um, the war junk. But now, a couple of spears getting mixed in. In fact, I think he's always had these spears. His water economy is absolutely booming. Now, both players are still on the water here, but Anatan does have a slight lead, and he's just focusing heavily on getting those Chukunu out. Is he just going mass Chukunu? He hasn't added in any more archery rangers at this point. Still floating quite a bit of resources. Let's ride on board with him and just watch from his perspective and see see what he sees as he just focuses down the men at arms. So the idea here is that you're just going to make so many Chukunu uh, that you can deal with armored units just through brute force because every Chukunu fires three bolts. It does five damage, so it's not a lot. Uh, and it does a minimum of one damage. If you're up against a unit that's got six armor like this, uh, you're, you're still going to do one damage. So it's actually uh, getting the, the plus two upgrade against this strategy. It's kind of, uh, I, I don't know if the right word is superfluous or just pointless. Uh, either one of those two. But yeah, it, it doesn't make a whole lot of sense to be getting that. Because uh, even if you're diving against like town centers and whatnot, uh, the, the town centers still do, they've, they've got their barbicans, right? Like they've got that extra damage that's coming through. Now the men at arms going to get kited against. You can see him looking to focus down the men at arms on the front line. And Lucifron, is he moving into Mangonels? He has to move into a Mangonel here to deal with this. But then the problem that you've got is Enetan is like a top 20, top 30 player. He's going to have absolutely great micro. And now the raid's coming in. This is exactly what we want to be seeing here on the defense from 
from uh, Anatan. He's trying his best to hold on, but this is how you get back into the game from Lucifront because he's dealing with this push on one front. I don't know how he's going to hold it over here. Like, maybe... The thing is, men at arms don't work in this situation. The problem is, if you go for men at arms, you're just going to get kited to the ends of the earth. You, it's got to be knights. Um, and I, I don't think you can go horsemen either because the horsemen will get one shot. And the problem is, you're slowly moving towards that number of Chukunu where you're going to start two-shotting the enemy knights or the enemy lances. And that's where you've got a real problem. We can see he's mixing in some spearmen. So, Anatan definitely not playing to the... The, the strength of... Oh, okay. Now we're looking a little bit more serious. This is looking a little bit better. And a 10. Got to be... Got to be careful. Falling back away from this position. You can see him looking to try and kite out all of the... All of the lances. Focusing down the one in the center. Making sure he's not attack moving. First one does go down. You can see the damage coming out is really good. Slowly but steadily making his way through. Looking to focus down the men at arms. Definitely don't want to be focusing the men at arms. You want to be focusing down those lances. Look at the damage difference between them, right? You're talking 12 versus 24. Sure, they've got a little bit less health, but uh, uh, it, it just works out better to be focusing down the lances. And I'm, I'm kind of impressed at how well Anatan just held that. That 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 was kind of crazy. I mean, he's got more reinforcements coming. Lances on the backside. Is he going for a second TC? Here could be it. I mean, he's on 500 stone. We're just we're seeing Anatan just saying, "Sorry, man, I don't care. I don't care that your castle." <laughs> I can literally feel that him, him saying that right now. Like, I don't care that your castle. I'm going to kill you. <laughs> Look at the population difference. 55 military pop against 6 military pop. I can't help but feel like it was just Lucifron not, not getting on the raids early enough, maybe? Was it just not the double production coming out from, from the, the Uvu? He's sitting on 700 stone at the moment. You think about that, right? 700 stone, that's that's how many... That's like three double production cavalry batches, so he's missing out on three cav... He went for a second TC. A little bit greedy here from Lucifron. He's actually down on the Vils. He's lost quite a few already. And Chukunu going to be moving under the town center. This does not look good right now for Lucifron. And a 10. Going to be trying to clean up this game. Spearman coming in. They're going to be trading out very well with any of these lances. They do make their way past and able to take out those lances. And now Chukunu going to be looking to take down villagers. He's got the, the extra health from textiles, but I don't think that's going to make too much of a difference here. And now losing more and more workers up to 30 worker kills and good game gets called. Lucifron losing a game against Enetan with a Chukunu Spearman attack in the Feudal Age despite being in the Castle Age. Really nice play there from Anatan. Fellas, if you want to see more high action games like this, make sure you check out EGC TV. I'll leave a link in the description of where you can watch them live. 15 GMT, 10 a.m. Eastern. Thank you so much for watching.